All right. Uh, thank you so much, Frankie, for that warm welcome. I appreciate it. Um, as uh, she said, um, or Frankie said, my name is Sarah McKenna Crowley. I use she, her pronouns. Um, and I recently defended my dissertation in the Department of Educational Leadership and Policy here at UT Austin. And I'm a WGS portfolio student, assuming I ac actually like fulfilled all the requirements. Jackie will let me know later. Great. Uh, so um, let's talk about motherhood during COVID. Um, as we know, more generally, uh, care work, um, such as that performed by mothers, as well as in care professions, such as nursing, um, teaching, um, perhaps even being a flight attendant, is both historically undervalued and often performed by women. Care work is often undervalued both economically and otherwise. A popular uh, statistic is that if someone were to be paid a salary for all of the work that someone does for staying at home between childcare, cooking, cleaning, et cetera, the salary would be something like $70,000. Um, nonetheless, uh, care work is also seen as lower prestige um, and less important because if, especially if it is unpaid. Um, certainly relatedly, uh, women are leaving the workforce at very high rates during the pandemic. Um, as of September, 2020 alone, uh, 865,000 women had left the paid workforce. Um, some reasons for that uh, include what one professor, Jessica uh, Calarco says, other countries have social safety nets, the US has women. Um, what I think the professor is getting at here is that the burden for doing uh, work that is necessary for home, family care, uh, elder care, things like that, historically has fallen on women. Um, and we're seeing the results of that during the pandemic. Specifically uh, for mothers, um, the burdens of providing education during remote schooling has been a real challenge. Uh, I'm sure you've sort of seen or perhaps personally experienced the difficulties of trying to uh, manage worksheets and Zoom connections and uh, various aspects of remote schooling particularly. Um, so uh, mothers in particular are having difficulties managing that and performing their own paid or unpaid labor. Sorry, losing my mouse. Right. So um, who could have predicted this exodus from the, from the workforce as a result of the pandemic? Um, I, I, I would say everyone. One of the articles I referenced in the previous slide from the New York Times talk about, talks about a mystery of why so many uh, women are leaving the workforce. But um, I would argue that before the pandemic, there was a crisis of care simmering beneath the surface. Um, particularly for mothers, I would say that there are they are caught between two competing demands, particularly mothers who are working outside the home. Trying to perform competent motherhood within an uh, American context and living up to the demands of their professional responsibilities. Um, the discourses around motherhood in American society generally assume that it is a, uh, shall we say, totalizing enterprise, that mothers should be giving 100% um, or as much as possible to to their children um, and dedicating themselves to that aspect of their lives. Um, and indeed, it is both noble and right to do so. That's a pre uh, preeminent discourse. And work, so, uh, similarly in American context, also often requires such a totalizing, giving everything they have to the profession, particularly as an attempt to maintain some sort of economic security in our neoliberal world. So uh, to that end, um, our, my, me and my team conducted research with 21 working mothers in the student affairs profession at a single higher education institution before the pandemic. Um, I define uh, student affairs here as all working with all elements of higher education that take place outside of the classroom. Uh, some typical student affairs professions might be residence life, people who work with the dorms, uh, the residence halls, student conduct, um, academic advising, student activities. Um, those are all uh, parts of what is considered the student affairs profession. The student affairs profession, which is also um, numerically dominated by women, requires both substantial time commitment and emotional labor in the jobs, um, required to make sure that students are um, trying to su survive and thrive in the camps, particularly in COVID times. Student affairs profession requires a lot out of people. Our research team was comprised of then graduate students and a faculty member. Um, everyone else on the, who's a, who was a graduate student when we started the team has since graduated. I'll be graduating in May. Um, and as part of our research design, we asked questions of the participants about their work norms and their home life. Demographically, uh, the folks in our study were 5% Asian American, biracial, and multiracial, and these are self-defined terms, 5% uh, Black, 19% Hispanic or Latina, and 61% White. 91% of them were in different gender relationships, and 95% were married. 
The average amount of children for folks in the study was two um, as of the time of data collection, and their average years in the student affairs profession was nine. Most of them were in their early 30s and 40s when we conducted the study. So how we conducted our analysis, um, myself and the research team engaged in frequent debriefing and discussion of findings, which we revisited over the few years since we actually did our interviews and focus groups. We were also really cognizant of the positionalities we held within the research team. Um, not all of us on the team were parents um, or mothers specifically. Um, not all of us came to the same demographic backgrounds and we weren't all necessarily uh, in the student affairs profession. Um, we used a combination of inductive and deductive coding methods, meaning that we applied uh, codes from the, to the data that we had both generated from the data itself, but also from other theoretical frameworks and research that we used to analyze the data. We further wrote individual narrative memos, so we had a sort of um, precy of each individual story. And for this pr presentation in particular, I looked very carefully at every element of our data that had to do with care. So um, our findings, uh, I'll talk about some of the costly elements of care, um, as well as the unsupportive spouses that many participants experienced, some of the senses of professional and personal failure that they shared, as well as their mental health and their mental load. Overall, when it comes to care, the systems of um, work are not designed for, for working moms um, or working parents who do not have someone else at home responsible for the other elements of work. All right, one second, I gotta move the photos so I can see everybody, or so I can see my quotes. Um, the systems are designed for working moms. Um, this applies to both the work systems that might require a 40 hour work week, being in the office from eight to five or something similar, and one that was very based in, um, I guess, shall we say, tra uh, traditional white collar norms of work. Uh, Jasmine, who is a, a multiracial participant with two kids, notes that obtaining flexibility in schedules is very difficult if you want to have a family in this industry, i.e. student affairs. I don't feel like it's so easy to take care of family when somebody gets sick or if they're out of school and it doesn't match our schedule or something like that. Uh, so what Jasmine's noting here is that um, there, the work norms require a worker to be present in the office um, and doesn't require a lot of flexibility if a participant's child is sick um, or anything like that that could allow the participant, um, I don't know, a life outside of work, frankly. A lot of the participants in my study share, share that spouses were largely unhelpful when it came to picking up uh, work uh, in the home. Uh, so for instance, one participant mentioned that she felt like the CEO of the household having to be the manager for all the tasks that needed to be done. Supervisor support further varied um, for the folks in the study. Some folks had supervisors who were really understanding of their definition or their definition of their roles as mothers and the responsibilities they had in that regard. Other supervisors were not and believed that their status as mothers was something that should be basically kept outside the office and not, and not brought up. Financially, care is quite expensive. Um, the student affairs profession, and perhaps this is understood, is historically a, a fairly low paying one. Um, so a lot of participants really struggled with this idea of whether they should even be working um, if they have children that were going to be in daycare because their entire paycheck um, would be going toward care. Uh, Hortensia, who's a white participant with two kids, um, noted that to have three kids in care was basically going to be her entire paycheck. Um, this was also especially relevant for folks who had younger children where they had to be in daycare during the, during the work week. Um, when there was daycare available um, on campus, there, it was very difficult for participants to get into the, the campus-based daycare, which was also relatively affordable. Um, the Jasmine noted that I wish there was some priority about the daycare so that you're not waiting for two years to get your kid in. Some participants shared that when they found out they were pregnant, the first call they made was to the daycare <laughs> to get on the campus wait list. Even when uh, participants' children were older, the summer programs were also another puzzle that they had to figure out and account for both financially and logistically. Uh, Constance, who is a biracial participant with two kids, notes that figuring out childcare options during the summer months is going back to the management, that transferable skills, like that's a Tetris puzzle of calendaring. So another thing that participants had to deal with. Um, additionally, participants really noted a perception of failure um, once they became mothers. Before they um, were mothers, they were used to succeeding in every aspect of their life. 
but with, when they were within the context of competing impossible demands between the student affairs profession and being mothers, they felt like they were unable to measure up and that they had failed. The student affairs profession and the norms of it required being there for students, particularly in emergency situations. Um, unsurprisingly, motherhood norms also require the same thing for children. Um, so this idea that participants needed to be constantly present and available um, for both their work and their home situations was really difficult. And a lot of participants struggled with that and feeling like failures. Sylvia, who's a white woman with two kids, notes that um, I've done a good job about being a mom in my career, and I don't really have much left over. I can't give 100% to every area. Um, when participants really struggled with whether they wanted to move up the career ladder or stay in their current position, they had to balance that decision with how it would impact their families. Uh, Matilda, who is a white woman with one child, notes that I'm starting to feel that I either need to stagnate in my career in order to achieve that work-life balance, if I do want to go up the career ladder, I'll be forced to make sacrifices when it comes to my family. Summing up this sort of perception of failure, um, Gabrielle, who's a white woman with two kids, notes, I feel like in student affairs, we're expected to be all of the things to all of the people all of the time. Um, and while she can do that, I'd go home and do that second shift, so that additional responsibility of doing work in, in the home environment. That's on faith. Gabrielle continues, sometimes it's really exhausting because you're already doing so much in your role. And I think our work is really emotional, one, because we want it to be, because we care about what we're doing and we care about the people we work with. So you're giving a lot here in the office and then also expected to obviously give a lot at home still, which is the tricky balance of it, I guess. In terms of care responsibilities um, the and managing to achieve some sort of semblance of work-life balance, participants were clear that um, time equals money. Uh, Hortensia noted, each and every person that I'm thinking that accomplishes all of that, so everything in their life, um, both at work and at home, I've actually found that, oh, they're able to pay for someone to clean their house. Oh, they don't ever go to the grocery store, they just get groceries delivered. Um, so participants who perhaps were married to folks who were more high earning um, or knew other people who were in higher earning couples um, really noted the difficulties that not getting paid a lot had on the on their on their lives. When it comes to mental health and mental load, uh, participants also shared that this was a continuing difficulty with them. Um, so for mental load, you can think about that as a constant checklist of things that need to be done. Constance's husband learned about this concept from a work seminar. Uh, and when she told us that story, it was like Angel saying and the clouds parted. It was like he gets it. He understands this mental load that's operating uh, for folks in uh, for working mothers. Um, Jeanette, who is a white woman with one kid, notes that she feels a sense of mental load um, because this it's a never ending perception of perfection that you think is going to be there when you get all of these things done. Um, the mental load also took a real toll on participants' mental health and abilities to succeed in the work environment. Uh, Natasha, who's an Asian American woman with three kids, notes, I think it would be really helpful for people in leadership to understand why people take these types of student affairs roles and what are sort of these motivating factors because they can get a lot of great work out of mothers. But they can only really push us so far. Um, so I wanted to share this particular quote um, when we think about the future of care because this is um, a very, very, very clearly pre-pandemic quote. Gabrielle says, I think that people do tend to assume the grass is always greener. So I think, well, why don't I just stay home? Um, I can't tell commute from 12 to 4 every day because my job is to meet with students in person. There's only so much that you can really do. And plus, and I mentioned to my boss before, like, if there's a job responsibility that comes up that I could easily do at home, I would be interested in it because it would give me that flexibility. Right now, none of my job duties have that. It's not like, oh, this would be easy um, to do at home because you have access to everything. I like the separation. So this quote to me is sort of like accidentally quite dated um, because we now know that other models of work are possible. Um, so I wonder what kind of work environments are going to stick post pandemic, both in student affairs and, other, and in other environments. I would really love it if work were reimagined to be beyond a eight to five model, beyond a 40 hour a week model, but um, in still a way that is respectful of participants time. I think we've all seen during this pandemic how it's much easier for work and home life to all bleed together in a way that can be really unhealthy and destructive. So I would like to think about work, maybe it's product-based or maybe it's, I don't know, trust-based or something like that. I'll also note that white mothers in our study framed choice as work or home. Women of colors were less, uh, did not uh, frame the, the choice in that way. It was more student affairs profession or a different kind of work. And queer mothers reported a more equitable division of labor. I 
suggest um, in the United States, we look to other countries about daycare, childcare, um, and similar situations to really make sure that we are valuing the importance of daycare and childcare financially and otherwise. Um, I also think we could think about communal living, so not necessarily a nuclear family as a as an imagined suburban ideal, but living in environments where that are perhaps multifamily um, and where childcare and other tasks are shared equally. Um, I also think people are probably going to be moving closer to family if they have a good relationship with them after the pandemic. So um, references are up on the shared Google Drive, which I think is already in the chat. Uh, thank you to the research team members and my participants. Uh, research team members are listed below. Uh, and here's my contact information. Uh, thanks so much for listening.